turned on here. And for those of, uh, for those of you that are joining us online, uh, just a reminder, we're uh, only recording the uh, preaching or teaching uh, uh, part of the mess of the uh, uh, services now, except for Sunday morning, Sunday morning AM service. Uh, we'll record the uh, song service and, and uh, all that uh, for uh, some time. We're not sure exactly how long we'll do that. Uh, but the point and I are still uh, praying about uh, timing and all that. Um, and whether we should continue to do that. Uh, you pray for wisdom and, and direction for us if you would uh, about that. Turn your Bibles, you know, uh, uh, the last uh, three weeks here, uh, this is the fourth week, I told you I would kind of be te- preaching a series uh, of messages, and uh, uh, look with me, if you will, uh, turn with me to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, and then I'll get into uh, telling me what I've been preaching about. If you've not been uh, following the messages, uh, we talked about uh, Nehemiah for the first uh, three weeks. And uh, in this series, and we were talking about how uh, uh, it was the uh, uh, what the enemy was trying to do, the, the plan of the enemy, and, and uh, uh, of course we know uh, uh, Satan ultimately is our enemy. That's uh, uh, who our enemy is. It's not uh, mankind. Uh, uh, man is not our enemy. We know that Satan is behind it all, and no matter what we are looking at, and facing, and all that. Uh, but uh, we talked about. Uh, uh, how the plan of the enemy was first public slander, and uh, that was uh, uh, what uh, the uh, um, enemies of Nehemiah tried to do. They tried to publicly slander him, and then they tried to get him to pr- uh, uh, commit private sin, and uh, that's what we looked at as well. And then uh, uh, the powerful fear, they tried to use fear to uh, try to uh, uh, get Nehemiah to stop, and uh, uh, of course, this uh, lesson, or this message, uh, finishes up that series uh, about having no fear. Amen. Uh, and he said, "Well, aren't we supposed to be fearful of this virus, or uh, aren't we supposed to be fearful of of uh, this or that?" And, and uh, you know, there's some people say, "Well, I'm afraid of the dark. You know, I'm fearful of the dark." And, and uh, uh, I'll share some things with you here in just a moment uh, that hopefully help you realize, hey, we don't have to have fear. Of anything and anyone, amen. Uh, Second Timothy chapter number one, and uh, hopefully you found it. Uh, as you're, uh, uh, if you haven't, as you're turning there, as a butcher uh, was shooing a dog from his shop, he happened to see a $10 bill and a, a note in his mouth reading, 10 lamb chops, please. Amazed, he takes the money, puts a bag of chops in the dog's mouth, quickly closes the shop, and he follows the dog, watches him wait for a green light, look both ways, trots across the road to a bus stop. The dog checks the timetable, sits on the bench. When the uh, bus arrives, he walks around to the front of the bus, looks at the number, boards the bus, and the butcher uh, uh, follows uh, the dog, just kind of dumbstruck about what's going on. As the bus travels out into the suburbs, the dog takes in the scenery, and after a while, Stands on his back paws to push the stop button, and then the butcher, of course, follows him off the bus. Dog runs up to a house, drops his bag on the stoop, uh, on the, the front porch area, and goes back uh, down the path, takes a big run, and throws himself against the door. Whap! Uh, with a big, loud sound. Does this again and again with no answer. And so he jumps up on a wall, walks around the garden, beats his head against a window, uh, the dog does, jumps off and waits at the front door. The big guy uh, kind of sleepily opens it and yells at the dog. The butcher, amazed at what he had just seen, runs up and screams at the guy, what in the world are you doing? This dog's a genius. The owner responds, uh, responds genius? I don't think so. It's the second time this dog has forgotten his stupid key. <laughs> <laughs> Second Timothy chapter number one. I'm going to stay with preaching. Amen. 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 Uh, stupid dog. Amen. Genius dog. Amen. But anyway, so Second Timothy chapter number one. I'm going to stay with preaching because that's that's what I know how to do. Amen. My family would starve to death. If I, if I stopped and going to comedy, we'd starve to death. I guarantee it. But I'm not starving. Amen. So uh, anyway, Second Timothy chapter number one. Let's stand to show respect to the reading of God's word. If you cannot I understand, you may remain seated. But if we could, stand at your respect as we read uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 7. I want you to read it with me uh, here here tonight. 
uh, let's read it all together. Those of you that are at home, uh, if you would also uh, read it with us out loud. And uh, by the way, if you're at home, if you could do us a favor and like or love, uh, give us some kind of reaction uh, to the uh, uh, to the message. And then if you maybe comment, let us know that your family is watching as well. And, uh, and then maybe share it afterwards. Uh, that would be helpful uh, to us. We're going to read it together. Second Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 7. Let's read together. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I title the message tonight, uh, fittingly, No Fear. No Fear. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. And Lord, we uh, uh, just pray that you would guide and direct our thoughts and, and our lips here this evening, Lord, and, and our hearts and our minds and, and our ears as well. Lord, help us to be attentive. And, and uh, Lord, I know there's a, uh, the desire many times to fear things uh, that go on and uh, go on around us. And, and uh, Lord, I just pray that you'd help me to convey to your people here tonight uh, Lord, the uh, message that we don't have anything to fear. Lord, uh, I pray that uh, uh, you'll be glorified, you'll be honored. Uh, but Lord, uh, your people will be uh, changed and challenged and encouraged. And, and uh, Lord, that uh, uh, we would see uh, 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 people uh, that are just uh, willing to have the boldness that is needed to be able to share the gospel with this lost and dying world. Lord, we know that uh, uh, people uh, uh, die every single day. Lord, we know that. Uh, Lord, we, there's death all around us, but Lord, help us to not even fear death. But Lord, I pray that you just uh, give us the boldness that, that we need uh, to live for you, to uh, be a witness for you. And Lord, uh, that through all of it uh, and all that we do, uh, you'll be honored and glorified. Bless now uh, this message. Bless your people. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory uh, for in advance in Jesus' precious name we pray for his sake. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you. May be seated. Excuse me. No fear. No fear. You know, uh, uh, growing up, there was uh, a number of things that I would fear. Uh, uh, there was, uh, of course, for uh, the longest time, I feared the dark. You know, I think... Uh, Probably every single kid has gone through that. They're kind of afraid of the dark, and and uh, uh, some kids maybe you know, you're like, oh, I was never afraid of anything. Well, okay, that's fine. Uh, but then I know uh, I know some people. Boy, they see a spider. Boy, they're ah, you know, and and uh, they see a snake. Ah, me and spider. I'm like, okay, let's pull off its leg. No, I'm fine. <laughs> and squish it. Amen. That's all I do. And get rid of it. My wife says, you're my hero. Amen. And, uh, <laughs> So uh, then if there's a snake, you know, uh, uh, you know, depending on the snake, my kids, boy, I tell you, they don't uh, fear anything. You know, sometimes I'm like, uh, where'd you get that? You know, I think one time uh, Timothy got bit by uh, either a snake or uh, uh, one of those, uh, uh, sal not a salamander, but uh, yeah, like, I didn't like those, but anyways, uh, bit them and it was biting hard and, and uh, for a while he didn't want to go around them and, and all that. And like I said, growing up, I was kind of afraid of the dark and and uh, uh, then there was a time that I became afraid of dogs. Uh, some of you know I've, I've shared the testimony where I got bit by a dog, and, and uh, therefore well, I was kind of afraid, especially of that dog, amen. Uh, and, uh, but uh, any kind of dog, you know, there was actually a couple of other dogs that we had on our paper out, my brother and I. Uh, we had a paper up together. There was one dog in particular, the you know, Bolton family. Uh, they always said, oh, your our dog doesn't bite. You know, that's what everybody says, amen. <laughs> and uh, this dog, man, I tell you, uh, it bit us more times. Uh, I, I probably lost more uh, bottoms of your uh, pant leg, amen. Uh, I probably lost more of those uh, from that stupid dog than any other uh, uh, any other dog I come across. And, man, that thing would just, you know, you know it's one of those, uh, what is that, Boston Terrier, I think is what it was. And, uh, you know, grab hold and just kind of, you know, go back and forth. And you hear it snarling and we're like, oh, I'm trying to pedal and trying to get away from it. And, and uh, so there for a while, like I said, I was kind of fearful of, of dogs. And, and I remember there was a, uh, a message my dad preached. And, uh, and I don't think he had the title of No Fear. Or it wasn't about fear. But uh, in that message, he mentioned this particular passage. And uh, uh, it just, he reminded me, uh, and he was reminding everybody that, uh, uh, you know, we don't have to fear man. We don't have to fear anything. And 
And again, I don't remember uh, the, the title of that message. I just remember that uh, particular part of that message that really spoke to my heart. And that got me to the point where uh, I no longer feared the dark. I no longer feared animals. You know, no, no longer feared dogs. And I was wise, amen. And I said, okay, that dog's going to bite. And so I'll keep my bike in between uh, that dog and me. And, and that way that dog can't bite me, that kind of a deal. Uh, but uh, uh, I didn't fear uh, the dark. I, I remember... Uh, uh, the first time that uh, uh, I walked through our house in the complete dark, I mean, it was just uh, complete black, you know, there was no street lights or anything on, and uh, uh, we were able to walk through our house, and, and I walked right into the wall. No, I didn't do that. I, I knew where that wall was, and I was able to walk through it. I didn't have any fear, because uh, I knew exactly, you know, hey, God's here with me, uh, and uh, uh, I remember this uh, passage here, and and, uh, you know, there was uh, uh, no fear in my heart that was wondering, oh, what's in the dark, you know, and uh, what's under my bed, or what's in the closet, or, or uh, you know, we had a root cellar, you know, that was the, the thing that I was kind of a fear, uh, fearful of for a while, and then I realized, oh, there's nothing in the root cellar except, except some uh, spiders and some old food, and, and uh, that was about it, and our, our, uh, the well to our water. But... Uh, Satan, uh, he's used fear down through the centuries to control people. Uh, you know, there was uh, uh, fear of famine. That's why uh, uh, you never t see uh, uh, the Lord tell uh, uh, Abraham uh, to leave uh, the promised land uh, to go down to Egypt. But out of fear, they went down there. Remember? Uh, there's a number of times in the scriptures you can find where people, uh, they were fearing what was going to happen and fearful of uh, the future, fearful of the unknown. We talked about, uh, you know, uh, even fear of, of public opinion last week as well. And, and uh, uh, we know that Satan uses that to control us. And he'll, he'll continue to use fear until he is cast in the lake of fire for all eternity. That's something he's going to do. He's going to use fear uh, uh, for, uh, you know, Every single person, you know, there's some kind of a fear that uh, Satan will try to use in your life to get you uh, uh, focused on uh, that fear rather than on the Lord. But God does not want any Christian to live in fear of anything or anyone. So today I want to encourage you that you uh, do not need to live in fear ever again. I want you to give it, I want to give you just a, a few things to help you in your walk with the Lord so that you don't ever have to fe live in fear again. I've got four things here tonight that hopefully be a help and encouragement to each of you. First of all, number one, we see there the spirit of power. The spirit of power. I want you to notice in our text there, verse number seven, it says, For God hath not given us the spirit, and then we're going to skip that first one there. Uh, it says there, but of power. Uh, the spirit, uh, uh, not, uh, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. You know, fear comes from Satan, but power comes from God. Amen? Amen? We know that God has all power. How do we know that? Keep your view there. We'll come back to it in just a moment. But look at me in uh, 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 Matthew chapter number 28. Matthew chapter number 28. Very familiar passage. And we know uh, uh, from this passage, we, there's uh, uh, a number of uh, passages that I was uh, thinking of, uh, of using, but uh, we'll just focus on this one because of time. There's actually a lot of scripture here tonight uh, we'll be looking at. Matthew chapter number 28, and notice in verse number 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, Now, well, let me pause for just a moment. Is not Jesus 100% God? Amen? Amen? We know he's 100% man, but he's also 100% God. Amen? Amen. So, uh, uh, knowing that, it says there, uh, Jesus, he, remember, he's God. It says here, all power is given unto me in heaven and where? In earth. So we know that God is all powerful. But let me ask you this. Does your life exemplify that the power of God is upon you and your life? As a Christian, does God, uh, uh, is God showing his power through your life? You say, well, how do you know that, Pastor? How can I, uh, how can I know that? How can I determine that? I want you to know this with me, uh, uh, Second, uh, uh, Second Corinthians chapter number 12. Very familiar passage here. Second uh, uh, Corinthians chapter number uh, 12. And I want you to notice in verse number 9. If you remember, 
Paul was, hey, he had a thorn in the flesh. He was asking the Lord, you know, Lord, would you take this away from me? I, I don't want this thorn to, to be there. And, and uh, we, we were talking, we've talked about uh, what that uh, uh, thorn possibly could be. There's a number of things. It could be, could be a person. could have been some uh, physical ailment or, or whatever it was. But the Bible doesn't tell us. But he does say this in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And verse number 9, it says, And he said unto me, remember he had asked the, the, the Lord for uh, uh, this uh, thorn to be removed uh, at least three times. And uh, this is the Lord's response to Paul. It says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Isn't it amazing that uh, Paul was more satisfied that, uh, with the power of God being in his life and being exemplified in his life than he was about uh, getting rid of the uh, thorn in the flesh? Well, there are some thorns in the flesh, amen? Amen. There's some of you even here. No, I'm just kidding. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, the reality of it is that there are thorns in the flesh. And they happen. And it doesn't matter. We have to realize, hey, God may just want to exemplify his power through your life by allowing that thorn to remain in your life so that you are dependent upon him for his strength. Amen. By the way, you can, uh, God can give you power over the enemy. I want you to look with me in Luke chapter number uh, 10. Luke chapter number 10. You have to remember, uh, whatever power Satan has, it has been granted to him by God. He has no more power than what God has given him. Amen? Luke chapter number 10. And I want you to notice in verse number uh, uh, 19 and verse number 20. No, I want you. To, I, I don't want you to misunderstand me here tonight. I don't want you to think that. Well, you know, uh, uh, pastor says uh, you know uh, we should not fear, and so we can't get the virus. You know what? That's not. That's a. That's a, a lie. Uh, you know, whoever's telling you that, it's not me. Amen. Because uh, I'm going to tell you the reality of it is we can get any kind of disease. You know, there was, uh, uh, some of you remember, uh, there was the swine flu, I think it was called the swine flu, it was uh, H1N1, I think it was what it was called, and uh, it went around, uh, uh, there was a lot of people that got it, there was, uh, I know some friends, personal friends that got it, uh, and uh, there was some people, if I remember, at least one or two people in our church that even had it, and uh, it went through all over, uh, all over the country, and uh, uh, I believe it was, uh, I think it was like 2009, 2010, if I remember correctly. Is that, does that about sound about right? But you know, there was no, uh, there was actually more people that died from that than have died from this uh, uh, chronomia. Amen? That's the reality of it. Why? There is death all around us. You know, there's people that uh, get all kinds of ailments. You know what? Uh, I'm glad, you know, I, I praise the Lord for the missionaries that we have that are in, you know, some foreign countries. Uh, but there are some countries where, you know, malaria is uh, uh, dangerous and widespread. Uh, you know, where Ebola, you know, can be uh, uh, contracted easily. You know, all these kinds of different diseases. But notice with me, Luke chapter number uh, uh, 10 and verse number 19 and 20. It says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and power all, uh, over all, uh, I'm sorry, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. We have to realize, hey, we don't have power over uh, diseases, but we know somebody who does. We don't have power over death, but we know somebody who does. Amen. We don't have power over uh, uh, over eternity, but I know somebody who does. Amen. Amen. That's the reality of a Christian. You have to realize, hey, there is somebody that has that power and he has all power. And when God gives you his power, you'll realize that you have the omnipotent power of God behind you to accomplish that which he desires you to accomplish. Do you know Listen carefully. Did you know you will live 
until God says, that's it. Amen. Amen. Yep. Until he says, hey, this will be the date that you breathe your last breath. Uh, February, I was it, February uh, 24th? Is that the date? 24th, 2006. I think it's, is it the 24th? Yeah, I think it's the 24th. February 24th, 2006. That was the day my dad breathed his last breath. My mom and I had discussed, you know, I'm like, well, you know, if I would have just been here, you know, that I kind of beat myself up for uh, for a while. Boy, if I'd have just stopped by, if I'd have just come over, and I had the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, and I realized, wait a second, God had power, amen, over my dad's uh, uh, last breath. Now, he could have uh, easily stopped that from happening, but guess what? That was the time appointed for my dad. Why? Hebrews chapter number 9 and verse number 20 says, And it's appointed to man once to die. Amen? Amen. And after this, the judgment. But you see, this is why God has given you the spirit of power to realize that when you rely fully upon him, he will give you the power to succeed, the ability to have the victory. You see, God wants you to have the victory. He doesn't set you up for failure. Amen? God wants you to succeed. Now, this is not a uh, prosperity gospel. You know, you do good and everything good is going to happen in your life. Look, if you obey God, though, and you rely upon Him and His power, He'll give you the ability to succeed. Well, that's pretty awesome. Amen? This is the same power that God spoke into existence this very uh, world. Isn't that amazing? That's some power. Boy, we had this, uh, 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 they said it was the first time a uh, tropical storm that made it this far north. They were showing uh, the paths of, of some uh, 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 hurricanes. I think it was a hurricane that made it as far north as, uh, what was it, Sheboygan or something like that. Uh, somewhere in there, uh, kind of Green Bay area. But this last storm, uh, uh, was it called Crystal Ball? I kept wanting to call it Crystal Ball. You know, like a Crystal Ball. Yeah. That's what I kept wanting to I was like, oh, Cristobal. But anyways, uh, uh, it made it as far north as Iron Mountain. It's pretty amazing, amen? That's a lot of power. Do you know God has all that power? He had the power to be able to uh, uh, put the uh, stars in place. You know the moon? Did you all know this? The moon does not rotate. We see the same exact side of the moon every single time. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? The world is spinning, and the moon is still staying in the same place. That is amazing, amen? Am I, am I correct in, in that statement? Uh, it, it does rotate. It rotates a little bit, okay. For the most part, we see the main, uh, same side, though, if I remember correctly. I mean, I'll stand corrected, amen? The pastor's imperfect, all right. But anyways, <laughs> somebody knows science better than me, amen? That's why he teaches it, not me. <laughs> but the reality of it, God told the moon to stay right where it's at, and it's always right there. God told the stars exactly where to be. He told the sun where to be, the exact angle, and the exact uh, distance, and it's always there. Why? Because of God's power. And that same power, God can get to you to accomplish great things for him. So we see there, number one, the spirit of power. Number one, we see the spirit of power. Number two, we see the spirit of love. We see the spirit of love. Go back to our text, if you will. It says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of what? Love. God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of love. You know, when you have the love of God in your heart and life, it will change you and what you love. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? I want you to notice real quick, while I keep your finger there again, and uh, second three, we'll come back to here in just a moment. Look with me, if you will, at uh, 1 John. 1 John chapter number 2. 1 John chapter number 2. First John chapter number 2, picking up in verse number uh, uh, 14 and following. 
It says this, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked ones. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is what? Of the world. You as a Christian need to realize, hey, when you have uh, that spirit of love, when, and we're not, I'm not talking about, you know, hey, we all just need to get around and, and uh, get a big circle and sing Kumbaya. That's not what I'm talking about here. That's what the world wants, amen? The world thinks, hey, we'll just have world peace. No, the Bible even tells us there'll never be world peace until uh, uh, the Prince of Peace, Jesus, comes, amen? <laughs> We need to realize, hey, as God's love begins to uh, infiltrate and uh, inundate our life and control our heart and our life, we begin, it changes what we care about, what we, uh, what we love, amen? It'll change how you, uh, how you love others, by the way. Uh, uh, notice with me in 1 John chapter number 4. 1 John chapter number 4. And look with me, if you will, at verse number 6. 1 John chapter number 4, verse number 6 and following says, We are of God, he that, know, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. By the way, you ever, uh, you ever talk with somebody and you're like, Why? I kind of think they're a Christian. Amen. You ever done that? There have been times I, I've talked with individuals, had an uh, opportunity even Sunday night to be able to talk with an individual and and uh, I just came up and asked them, uh, so, uh, you know, have you ever put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? And they had to get a gospel tract out. And he goes, actually, yeah, that was back in the 80s I did that. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. And uh, uh, it was really neat, you know, to be able to hear his testimony. And uh, you never know what God will do. But, but uh, uh, and many times you can, you can tell when, a, when an individual is saved. But then he goes on to say in verse number 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God, and he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this uh, was manifested the, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here it is love, not that we, we love God, but that he loved us, and he sent his Son uh, to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God has so loved us, we also ought also to love one another. You know what? When, you, uh, when God gives you that spirit of love, it'll change who you love. Amen? We have to realize, remember, we, we, I know you've heard me say this, and I hope it never falls on deaf ears. We have to love sin. Amen? Or, we have to hate <laughs> sin. Making sure you guys are paying attention. Amen? We have to hate sin, amen? Listen carefully. To hate sin, but we have to love the sinner. Why? We know sin. We know what, what, uh, what it brings about, amen? We know exactly uh, uh, you know path of sin, what it leads to destruction. We know that. You can find that over and over in the Bible. But we have to love the individual. You know, the problem with uh, uh, this world is they want they want everybody to love everybody, and if, we know that uh, uh, we we cannot love sinful behavior. We cannot love it. You know, uh, the world will say, "Well, you know, this is this is a, a, a lifestyle." No, it's not. It's sin. Amen. Yeah. By the way, if the Bible calls it sin, it's sin in the Bible, right. and it's sin today. Amen. It doesn't matter uh, uh, what uh, uh, what society, what culture tries to uh, uh, you know call it or, or tries to uh, 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 you know uh, make it uh, acceptable that, to the world. My wife and I have talked about this. It's sad even in commercial. You can't even watch a commercial and there is some kind of a, a gay or lesbian uh, uh, couple in almost every single commercial now. Uh, just recently, there was a, uh, uh, a commercial. It's talking about we're in this together or something. And uh, it starts off, you know, I wonder if, the, you know, he'll have my eyes. And I wonder if uh, she'll have uh, uh, my heart disease. And, and it goes through, and then all of a sudden it shows a gay couple. 
And then later at the end of the commercial, it shows a lesbian couple. And you're like, well, what does that matter, Pastor? Well, the world is trying to normalize it. Amen? That's not normal. It's not normal. And you and I as Christians, though, we can hate the sin and still love the sinner. They still need Jesus Christ. That's what's going to change them. Amen? That's what's going to change our world. That's what's going to uh, change our community. Amen? I believe that with all my heart. The gospel of Jesus Christ is what's going to change people. And it'll change you and what you love. Too many, uh, uh, too many people, though, in this world love themselves, and it shows in what they do. It shows in their actions. Christians, by the way, should love the things of God first and foremost. That should be your love. Amen? You know, I, I, I'm not ashamed to uh, say who I'm going to vote for, and, and uh, most of you know uh, where, where, uh, where I stand uh, politically, but you know what? That all be hanged. Amen? Why? I am first and foremost a Christian. That's good. I'm, a, I'm a child of the king. Amen? And because of that, it should be uh, should affect my behavior and what I do and the things I love. Look at me in Colossians chapter number 3. Colossians chapter number 3. And in Colossians chapter number 3, I want you to notice in verse number uh, 2. Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 2, it says, Set your affection on things above, not on things above. On the earth. Remember, we know this world is one day going to burn up. Amen. Well, we I enjoy. I'm so glad we have a building here. Amen. I'm so glad. I'm th very, very thankful for the parking lot we have out here, and out here, and further out there. Amen. But the reality, excuse me, the reality of it is, this will not be here forever. The reality of it is that one day this building will be gone. The parking lot will be gone. But you know, God's word will stand sure. By the way, as a Christian, the love of Christ will change what you do. Notice in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. And in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, I want you to notice, uh, picking up in verse number 14. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. In verse number 14. It says, For the love of Christ, what? Constraineth us. Brother, uh, Brother Perkins, do you happen to have your uh, handcuffs tonight? I do not. He does not. Oh, no, that's all right. I didn't ask him to bring them. I was hoping he happened to have them on him, but uh, it is what it is. Amen. <laughs> but. <laughs> We're not constrained with that. But if Brother Perkins had a pair of handcuffs, he would put them on to try to constrain an individual that's trying to commit a crime. Would he not? Amen? Somebody's uh, you know, coming in here trying to uh, you know, shoot up the church or, or something else or whatever, trying to do harm, uh, they would constrain them. They would, you know, if somebody was in here trying to you know, physically fight, he would break it up and he would constrain them. Amen? Uh, uh, you, would, you have now. No. <laughs> well, the sheets and Brother, <laughs> Brother Perkins, you guys, that's it. No. <laughs> but anyways, they would constrain. That means they would, they would force you to do something against your will. Amen? Why? My will would be, hey, I don't want to be arrested, right? Listen carefully. For the love of Christ constraineth us. It means it forces us to do something that goes against our nature. You know, man uh, uh, likes to say, oh, all of mankind is good. No, we're inherited, inherently evil. The Bible, know, the Bible tells us that. Our hearts are desperately wicked. That's why we see sin, and, and that's why we see uh, uh, the things that go on in this world. That's why there's people that die. Why? They, you know, uh, there are people that kill other people. That just, it's, it's in mankind to do evil. Now, you and I as Christians should say, hey, wait a second. The love of Christ should constrain me to do what's right. Notice uh, 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 this passage here. 
For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto who? Unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, hence we, uh, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, that we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth we know him no more. You know what? Uh, uh, we have to realize we can't live for ourselves anymore. We don't get to, uh, you know, if you're a Christian, you don't get to say, hey, I'm just, this is what I'm going to do with my life. No, you have to obey God and say, God, I'll do what you want me to do. Many of you have heard my testimony before. When I was in high school, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to get into the NFL and uh, be a wide receiver, and I also wanted to get into uh, uh, NASCAR racing. Why? I just like speeding. <laughs> Amen. I just do. And uh, I've been on a couple racetracks, and they're a lot of fun. Amen. There's no speed limit on there. Amen. I've never been to the Autobahn. I've heard about it. I've heard. Uh, I know I, I went out to, uh, the closest I got to the Autobahn was uh, going out in Montana years ago. I don't know what their speed limit is like now, but years ago, uh, they didn't have any speed limit. And that was pretty awesome. Amen. <laughs> Where was it going with that? <laughs> Constraining. Constraining. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I wanted to do what I wanted to do years ago. And the Lord had to constrain me, amen, using some of my circumstances, using some of the messages that I heard, using many of the uh, different things that happened in my life to realize, hey, I'm not able to live for Tim Hallett. I was created to live for the Lord. Yeah. By the way, you as a Christian... You were created to live for God. You are not your own. You're bought with a price, the Bible tells us. You don't get to say, well, that's what I want to do with my life. No, you have to say, okay, Lord, what would you have me do with my life? Lord, what would you have me, uh, how would you have me to serve you and, and uh, follow you and obey you? Why? The love of Christ will change what you do. By the way, the love of Christ will fill you to be the most you can be. Notice with me Ephesians chapter number uh, uh, Ephesians chapter number three. Ephesians chapter number three. I want you to notice verse number seventeen and, and following. Ephesians chapter number three, beginning verse number seventeen, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and, and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passive knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Christian, God desires you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? You and I have to be willing to say, I'm going to empty me of me so that I can be filled with the most that I can be. You know, the spirit of love will change you to be more like Christ. Think about it. John chapter number 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You think about what Christ gave up. Because of his love for us, people hate, hate Jesus. You say, oh, they don't really hate him. Yeah, they do. There are people in this world that just hate Jesus. Hate who he is, hate who he represents, hate what he did. But you know, you and I need to realize, hey, sometimes we need to be self-sacrificing. It's, it's not about us, amen? It's all about Him. We need to give our all uh, for Him, and uh, the spirit of love will change you to be more like Christ. So we see that the spirit of love. Number one, we see the spirit of power. Number two, we see the spirit of love. Number three, we see a sound of mind. We see a sound of mind. Notice back in our text. Now I want you to notice in verse number uh, 7 again. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but, uh, but of power and of love and of a, what? Sound mind. You know, a sound mind 
is the beginning of a right spirit. When you have the right mindset, it'll change your whole attitude. Amen? That's right. And God wants you to have a sound mind. How do we know that? Just real quick, like Philippians chapter number 4. Philippians chapter number 4. I know we're looking at a lot of scripture here tonight. I hope you uh, brought some nimble fingers because we got just a little bit more to look at. Philippians chapter number 4. Notice in verse number 7. It says, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. On March, what was that? March 15th? No, March 16th. On March 16th of this year, my wife and I had, uh, uh, we had, uh, of course, Brother Copes, uh, he uh, uh, came up here to be with us for our couples retreat. And he preached for us. Uh, he did the couples retreat on March 13th and 14th. And then he preached for us here at our church on March 15th. And uh, we had discussed, we said, okay, hey, we can uh, uh, you know, go over and, and uh, uh, we'll take you out to eat at the Mall of America. And uh, we'll get some lunch uh, together and then get you on the plane. You'll head back home and, and uh, so on and so forth. Well, uh, he, we were discussing some things because of all this uh, Pronomia that was uh, coming about, and, and he said, "You know, brother Hallett, he said, would it be okay if we went a little bit earlier uh, to the airport than uh, what we were planning?" And I said, "Yeah, that's fine." And he said, "I've got to make some phone calls." And actually, on the way over, he was on the phone almost the entire trip. It was an hour and a half trip, and uh, he was on the phone calling different people. And he said, "Brother Hallett, I'm so sorry." And I said, "Oh, don't worry about it. You know, uh, you know, just uh, take care of whatever you got to take care of." And, and uh, uh, so they were discussing, you know, what they were going to do with the college and, and all kinds of different things. And uh, we dropped them off, my wife and I, and, and uh, we said, hey, uh, let's go, uh, you know, there's uh, Chick-fil-A, amen, uh, right over there in the Mall of America. And we're like, hey, let's go get some Chick-fil-A. And, and if you all don't like Chick-fil-A, that's too bad because I love it, amen. Uh, Chick-fil-A, uh, you need to get uh, a, a store here in Eau Claire, amen. <laughs> Then this will be God's country for sure. <laughs> the reality of it, we went over there, we ate, and we got done eating, and uh, uh, we, were, uh, we were talking about how just everybody's kind of just had this uneasy feeling. And uh, uh, so as we were driving back home, we were talking about all the things we needed to do, get done, and, and uh, both of us were talking about, we were like, you know, uh, could we heard some things on the radio, we were like, well, maybe it would be wise if we went and got some shopping done. It had been a couple of weeks uh, since we'd gone grocery shopping, and, and uh, so we said, oh, let's go do some grocery shopping. As we're going through, uh, we were at Woodman's. As we're going through Woodman's, uh, people just kind of had this thousand yard stare. I mean, it's just a blank look on their face. My wife and I, we were walking through, hi, how are you doing? Hey, good to see you. And there were some people that we acknowledged it. I think it was only like five or six people that acknowledged us. Everybody else was just in this daze. We were talking about how Lord had just given us peace about, you know, uh, going and getting groceries and, and all that. And, and uh, yet uh, the world was losing its ever-loving mind, amen? They were hoarding toilet paper. <laughs> that part it still, still blows my mind. Uh, they still, I don't think they still have uh, the toilet paper that we normally get at, uh, uh, at Woodman's. I don't think they've gotten it back yet. Uh, they just, uh, they had it for a little bit, and then they start uh, dividing those up, those packages, and it's like, look, we got seven in our family. We need more than nine rolls, amen, for a whole week, amen. But uh, uh, anyways, as a Christian, you and I have to be willing to say, you know what? God can give me a sound mind, no matter what the rest of the world is doing. The world can be, uh, you know, burning around us, amen, and yet we can have the peace of God knowing, hey, God's in control, amen. We can have peace knowing, hey, it's okay, God's going to take care of things. A sound mind, by the way, will bring about peace to your heart. Notice in verse number 9 of that same chapter. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 9. 
It says, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, what? Do. Do. And the peace, uh, uh, and the God of peace shall be with you. Hey, over and over we see in scriptures where somebody faced, uh, you know, uh, some insurmountable uh, uh, thing. You know, I think of Daniel facing the lion's den. He didn't go, ah, oh, I'm going to be thrown in the lion's den. He said, okay. I like, I like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Man, I tell you, they are some, some great men of faith. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood in the face of the king and said, look, king, just so you know, hey, we're not going to bow down to you. We're not going to bow down to your image. And be it known, hey, if God decides to deliver us, that's fine. But if not, know it. Be known, know it right here, right now, and we're not going to bow down. Man, that king Nebuchadnezzar got mad. Remember that? Takes him, throws him in the fiery furnace. Man alive, that takes some peace in your heart. Amen? But you know, that's exactly what a sound mind will bring about. It'll bring bringing peace in your heart. And a sound mind will affect what you do. Second Timothy, I'm sorry, Second Peter. Second Peter. Second Peter and uh, chapter number three, if you will. Second Peter, chapter number three. We're going to look at a couple of verses at the beginning of this uh, chapter, and then uh, a couple of verses almost toward the end of this chapter here. Second uh, Peter chapter number 3, verse number 1 and 2, it says this, uh, Second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up uh, your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which are spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles, of the Lord and Savior. And then skip down to verse number 11. Seeing that all, that all these things shall be dissolved. Talking about the world, amen. That in what manner of persons ought ye to be in a holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the, uh, of the day of God, wherein the heavens uh, being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall uh, melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein shall dwell with righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, uh, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. When you have that peace in your heart, it'll cause you to do what's right. Amen? You as a Christian need to be willing to say, hey, though the world may be burning around me, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to, uh, uh, as far as, uh, you know, uh, uh, men on there was uh, uh, just on the news tonight, they were talking about uh, looters that were buying stuff and now are trying to sell it on Facebook. Like, man alive, you are some dumb criminals, amen? That's the best way to get them caught, amen? And find it, hey, where are you, where are you selling this? Hey, I'm, I'm going to go, uh, I'll hook up with you, amen? Go arrest them. While the world goes crazy, and often uh, in cuckoo land, God can give the Christian a sound mind that doesn't follow the world off into the abyss of wacky world. Amen? You and I need to be willing to say, hey, I'm not going to follow that. I'm going to do what's right. Why? Because we can have a sound mind. Number one, we see the, power, uh, the spirit of power. Number two, the spirit of love. Number three, a sound mind. And lastly, number four, no fear. No fear. Back in our text, 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. He's not given us the spirit of fear. As a Christian, you don't have to fear the future. Amen? I'm glad I don't have to worry about the future. I have right now, here today. That's it. We're not even promised tomorrow. I'm not even promised 10 minutes from now. Amen? But I like what it says there in verse number 8 and uh, beginning of verse number 9 of our same text here. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but 
Be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath what? Saved us. Saved us. You are a Christian. Amen? You have a heavenly home. You don't have to worry about the future. You don't have to wonder, oh, what's going to happen tomorrow? Look, if we die tomorrow, guess what? As a Christian, you breathe your last breath. To be absent from the body, the Bible tells us, is to be present with the Lord. We breathe our last breath on earth, we're up in heaven. You say, where's heaven? I don't know, it's with God. Amen? But no matter where it's at, I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I'm glad I don't have to fear. I don't fear death. Amen? I know we're not jumping in line and seeing the first two's going to die. Amen? However, we're not to fear that. Something else you don't have to fear. You don't need to fear how, how you live for the Lord. Notice in verse number 9 again, he said, And called us within what? Holy calling. You see, God wants us to live a life that is holy because it will affect your testimony. He says in 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 16, Be holy for what? I am holy. Hey, as a Christian, it ought to affect what we do and how we live. You don't have to go breaking laws and just to prove uh, you know, somebody's righteous or not. Amen? You as a Christian need to be willing to say, Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey God. I'm going to follow uh, righteousness. I'm going to... Make sure that my testimony is right before the world. Amen? Why? Because they're watching. And then something else. Notice back in our text there, verse number 9. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. You don't need to fear man as a Christian. I want you to notice in Psalm chapter number 118. Psalm 118. And I want you to notice uh, verse number 6. Psalm 118 and verse number 6. The psalmist uh, says here, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Say, well, Pastor, uh, we might we might get the virus. Okay. Well, what what if we get this or we get that disease? Okay. We can't tr control what what you know what diseases we get or don't get. Now again, we can be wise, amen. Most of you know I'm a germaphobe, amen. Even tonight. I uh, uh, shook some hands, and guess what? Uh, there was a little kid sticky, and uh, their hands were kind of sticky, so you know what I did? I bathed in, no, I didn't bathe. <laughs> I got a couple squirts of that stuff, amen? Why? Because we can be wise. We don't need to fear what the, uh, fear man as a Christian. Then you don't need to, you, you will not need to fear what man can do to you. Look at Hebrews chapter number 13. Hebrews chapter number 13. And verse number 6. Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 6 says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. By the way, let me ask you this question, and I you, you don't need to answer it out loud. But if Christianity was outlawed, what would you do? What would you do? I'd like to think that I would be a Shadrach or Meshach or an Abednego and be willing to say, you know what? Hey, be it known, I'm only going to bow to my, my king, my king Jesus. And if me having to bow to any other king or any other person or any other religion 
is outlawed, or you have to do it that way, you can't, can't worship Christ, then I'll become an outlaw. Why? Hey, I have one Savior. Nobody else in this world died for me. I'm, gonna, I'm only going to bow to Jesus. And something else, and lastly, you don't need to fear the devil. You don't need to fear the devil. Notice in 1 John, 1 John chapter number 4. I think a lot of people have it in the, pictured in the mind's eye that Jesus, or not, uh, not Jesus, uh, that Satan uh, is this uh, person with a red suit and they got horns and they got a pointed tail and, and they got a pitchfork and, and uh, you know, they got uh, all these certain features about them and, and the Bible tells us that that the devil is an he, he's an angel of light. The Bible, matter, the Bible, matter of fact, tells us that when people see him, they'll say, "Is this is this the one that deceived the world, made kings to tremble? Is this the one? Why? Because he's he's an angel of light. He's a deceptive angel. We know that. When you think about how." How man perceives Satan. You know, there are some people, they, they fear Satan. We know that Satan is a, is a powerful being. He is not all powerful, though. As I said earlier, the power that he has is only granted to him, and it's limited by what God gives to him. We know he has the power and ability to affect people's lives. How do we know that? Look at the scripture. Job. If <laughs> Job lost his all of his uh, possessions, uh, you know, any, his source of income, and lost his family, lost his health, that was all at the hand of Satan. Amen? So we know he is powerful, but he's not all powerful. He only lost his his source of income, his possessions, his family, and his health, because God said, Satan, you can do this, but you cannot take his life. Amen? First John chapter number four. And verse number four. If you are a Christian, you're of God. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is what? in you than he that is in the world. You need to realize that Satan is uh, powerful, but God is more powerful. Amen? God is uh, bigger and better in and, and, and all sorts of different ways, in every single way, in all sorts of ways, but every single way. And you don't need to fear Satan. He's not this big boogeyman, you know, I'm going to come get you. Amen? Now we know he's aiming to he's aiming his fiery darts at us, amen. But we don't need to fear him. You see, as a Christian, you don't need to have any fear. You don't need to live in fear anymore. No fear. You see, God has given you a spirit. A spirit of power, a spirit of love, a spirit of a sound mind. He's not giving you a spirit of fear. He does not want you to live in fear of anything or anyone. As a Christian, you need to have the power of God in order to have this right spirit. Well, let me ask you this. What do you fear today? See, God wants you to have no fear. That's far as for prayer. Your head bowed, your eye closed, nobody looking around. In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation, and I want to invite you to come and talk to the Lord. But before we do that, I want to ask a couple of questions. One, maybe you fear death. Maybe you fear what's going to happen after life. What happens after you breathe your last breath? My dear friend, 
You don't need to fear that. But if you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you need to know this. You need to fear the one true God. You need to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's your only way to heaven. If you've never done that before, I, I would invite you, either after the service or if you're at home listening, that you get in contact with us and we'll take the word of God and show you from God's word how you can know for sure where you'll spend eternity. The other thing is this. You say, I know I'm saved, I'm on the way to heaven. Well, there's been some things I've been fearful of. I realize that Satan just been trying to keep me in fear. God's story in my heart through the message tonight. Pastor, this big prayer, would you pray for me? Would you think get that need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's so going Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are hands all over the side of the floor. Yes, thank you. I said, I want to tell anybody else. Thank you. Please, so you know. Just a moment, we're going to play a hymn of an invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk to more. Come and do business with him. I want you to come. I want you to come. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts. Bless now this invitation. Tell me what I pray to be glorified and honored through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.